March 2021 is here and today I want to share with you what I'm going to be doing in that month and quite simply some top tips I'm doing managing my team to help me grow my online Amazon arbitrage business. So stay tuned. If you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Parkinson, and quite simply, I've been selling now on Amazon for about four years. Right now, I'm on a mission to do one million pounds by the end of 2021. I'll drop a link up there. And quite simply, these monthly updates are to support that on that journey, where I talk about what I'm doing, and then pretty much every quarter, I'll give you an update on my profits and how I'm actually performing versus that one million pound challenge. So check that out. It's going to really help you in your business as well. Today, what I want to do through is a really quick rundown of February. I'll also talk about what I'm doing in March and then also as well some top tips that I can share with you that maybe can help you out as well in your business. So let's jump into it now. Okay, so what have I learned over February 2021? Well, quite simply, it's pretty much been a business as usual. Normally, I find February to be quite a slow month. January, you know, Christmas, January slow sales. February has been a continuation of actually good ROI, good sales volumes. I'm really, really happy. I think if I had to say probably maybe like two, two and a half K a day on sales, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and we're probably averaging about 30% ROI and then a bit more. So I'm really happy with that. Now, quite simply, also as well, we've been doing the training for my purchasing, my new purchasing assistant, and it's taking time. For example, when I first trained up my purchasing manager, that was about three months of a one month of four hours a day and then three months of continued support there or two months of continued support thereafter. With my new purchasing assistant, my purchasing manager, I'm not gonna lie, he's pretty much done it all. So honestly, hat off to him, thank you so much. And also I know last week, we pretty much did something like a 17,000 pounds worth of purchasing in one week, which is like next level purchasing. Not our best, but still a very, very good week. So I'm very happy with that. And hopefully we'll see that trend grow and I'll probably run out of money pretty soon. Last month has pretty much been business as usual, training up the purchasing assistant and also as well, just supporting my manager. Why? Because actually, we've actually had quite a lot of success and sales have been consistent when normally they are not. Okay, so that leads me quite nicely on to what are my plans for March 2021. So generally speaking, there's probably three things that I'm going to be doing over this month, which I think is, you know, maybe you're going to take on board that could help you as well. So number one, I talked about before, continuation of the training for my purchasing assistant. Now, quite simply, we've gone through the first four weeks, which is, if we say, the initial training itself, i.e. supporting it and getting her up to standard. And now, for the next two months, it's going to be very much hands-off, monitoring the deals, checking what's happening, and doing corrective action. We accept that there are going to be problems, but what we need to do is nip them in the bud the moment they happen. So what does this look like? Well, we've done the initial month. Now, in this part of the training, what do we do? We quite simply get our purchasing assistant to buy the products that they think they should buy. And at the end of every single day, what are we doing? We are reviewing those purchases. Now I'm not, my purchasing manager is, and if the purchasing manager disagrees with any of the purchases, what we can then do is go back to the supplier and cancel those orders. But what we're looking at is giving the purchasing assistant the autonomy to make the decisions, to make the purchase and do the whole process from end to end. And then at the end of every single day, we are going to review them and make sure they are the standard that we require. And obviously when we find a problem, we'll correct it and obviously continue to see that. Now what we should hope to see is that the number of problems we have just decreases over time and the purchasing assistant gets up to the standard required. Quite simple. Now, I'd probably just drop it out there if you want to know more about purchasing assistance and maybe you want me to, I don't know, make some more information about it and doing the training of it, let me know down below. Obviously, I can do that as well. But quite simply, for us, that is a key metric that we're looking at, i.e. just getting that purchasing assistant up to standard. And that's now going to be at least a one month monitoring process of not only just the purchases, but also as well tracking those purchases right through to the selling of the products to see how well her purchases perform versus maybe my purchasing manager and what she can learn from that. So continual feedback and improvement. Okay, so the second thing we're doing is supporting our sourcing VAs in regards to performance. Now, one thing we noticed was quite simply, we've got four sourcing VAs of which three are like smashing it out of the park. 
Now, quite simply, what does smashing out of the park look like? Well, in my business is we want each VA to generate £400 worth of profit. This isn't estimated the actual profit from the deal that we buy from them. So their cost is about £100 and then they generate £400 worth of profit, which means in effect we take £100 off the £400 and we generate £300 worth of profit per week. Now we've got one VA who's kind of come up to that, hit the target, but hasn't gone any higher. But we've got all the other VAs who are really smashing it going through the roof. So what we're doing is we're supporting that VA in generating better leads, challenging them to find more deals, to find maybe deals that we can purchase more of. Why? Because we want to get that VA from £400 a week to maybe five, six, £700 per week in profit. And what does that mean? It means, number one, the business does really well. But number two, the VA also gets their bonuses because we have an incentive scheme in place that's going to recognise that great success. And hey, my God, I want to pay them their bonuses as well because it's a win win scenario. So number two, supporting our sourcing VAs in just driving the results and hey, getting them all up to the same level, looking at the one that maybe isn't performing as well. How can we get them up to the same level as everyone else? Now, the third and final one that I'll talk about is probably something that a lot of people might not face, but it's something that we face in my business. Now, quite simply, this is what I would call stock control problems. And I, and I would use that term as a generalization to try and explain what's happening. Now, quite simply, uh, I have learned how to do stock control from working in bars where we had to do inventory management and I had to do it pretty much every week. Now, the majority of the way people do stock control within Amazon is they don't really do stock control. What they do is they look at, say, like their software and we use Seller Toolkit and Seller Toolkit says you've made, let's say, £10,000 worth of sales and you've used £5,000 worth of stock to generate those sales. Now, it's saying you've used £5,000 worth of stock. What we do in my business is quite simply, at the end of every week, we take a full stock take. What's in Amazon, what's in our warehouses, what we've purchased and what we've got in transit all around the place. So I want to know what's the physical cash value of all the stock. Now, every single week, what we've done, or generally every single month, actually, what we used to do is to take the cash value at the end of the month. And then also we'd look at the cash value at the end of the previous month. So we'd take the cash value at the end of the previous month, add in all the purchases, and then take off how much we've got left at the end of the month, i.e. the next stock take. Now that difference should be the same, or pretty much very close to, what you're seeing on the Seller Toolkit, i.e. the stock being sold is the same as the physical stock being used. Purchase or opening stock plus purchases minus your closing stock equals purchases. Now quite simply, what we've seen is that there have been variances between that. And what does that mean? It means that my profit and loss figures aren't reflective of what I'm estimating or seller toolkit. So what are we doing? We are transitioning from monthly stock takes down to weekly stock takes. And then what we're gonna do is identify when one week has a variance versus the previous week and versus seller toolkit. I know, quite complex. Then what we'll do is we'll go into each individual product and try and find one product where it's got a really big variance and we'll see what's happened, i.e. what's happened with the purchases, what happens with the movement of that one line to identify what's happening with it and maybe where there's a problem in our process or maybe what's going on because it's probably going to be that it's in transit somewhere and we're not recording it. But once we can identify that, then we can realise how we can fix the problem for all our stock. So quite simply, we're transitioning from monthly stock takes to weekly stock takes and then we're going to identify it by individual SKU. Why? Because we just want to make sure that the stock we think we're selling is actually the real stock that's disappearing. Why? Because, hey, we all know it. Controlling your stock is really important because that's actually where the value is. So that's what we're doing in March in regards to controlling stock to ensure that we're doing it correctly. And you know what? My p and is accurate at the end of every month when we run our zero accounting reports. Okay, so there's another one which I'm thinking about. And the one problem we're kind of looking at right now, and I'm looking at maybe into March, maybe April, May, is quite simply is that right now we're probably buying 17 grams worth of stock. And I think we can keep scaling that, it's not a problem. But there does become a point whereby 
you're like, we just want to buy more bulk. Potentially looking at wholesale, going down that route, or maybe just doing a couple of lines that we sold really well, very high volume, looking at wholesalers for that. Now, quick question for you guys, are you looking at maybe making that transition or maybe even just implementing or adding some wholesalers into your, your business? If so, let me know down in the comments. I'm really interested to know. Is whole something you're interested in? Maybe I could do some videos about that, that journey that we're on. And if and when we do do it, I have actually done wholesale before. I actually started my Amazon journey doing wholesale, then transitioned to OA. I know, backwards, hey? And then I'd probably say the final thing we are looking at maybe in March, maybe in April is a bit of software we, we use called Seller Toolkit. It does all our profit and loss, which is great. So quite simply, they've just released a new repricer and I'm really interested to potentially check that out, see how it's working. They've had a lot of very favorable reviews about them and a lot of people who I know who speak very highly of it. So I might give it a go, see how it happens. But Seller Toolkit, new repricer might be something that I'll do. And if you are interested, I'll drop a link down below to Seller Toolkit with uh, an affiliate link that you can get a discount on that, or it gives you an additional extension to the trial period that you have. So check that out. Obviously, it's going to help you out. And I really use it for all my like reclaims and just monitoring my profits every single day. I really like it. I think it's a great big kit. And I know the developer as well. Now, just I just want to take a quick moment to say that while I talk about what I doing in March 2021 is quite simply that is what is going on in my business but interesting enough how much time do I put into that I probably hate to say it anywhere between about three to eight hours a week which is not very much at all why because I've got a great team who do it all for me I've talked about a purchasing manager a purchasing assistant having four sources you know you've got an admin assistant there is so much that is the people are just happening to grow my business now, how can I do this? Well, it all started by simply by having one VA, my first VA, and that would be having, and if you're gonna do the same thing, it would be a sourcing VA. So if you are thinking about growing a team, maybe you look at what I'm doing and say, actually, you know what? I think I need a team. I think I need someone to help me find deals while I'm sleeping. Look no further, have a look at Fast Track FBA VA Academy. This is quite simply a service which I created whereby we do all the recruitment, we find the right person, we interview them, we test them, we write the contracts, we train them up to the standard required to be a manual sourcing VA. And then they start with you in your business working for you and you pay them, they are your staff, and will support you with their results for 12 weeks. We've got a team on hand who do the whole process completely end to end, even supporting you to do one thing, get results, find deals that are gonna grow your business. And quite simply, it's a service which we've run over last year, probably training about 90 VAs for our clients. And even last month, we were doing about 50 VAs for our clients as well. We've got some great feedback and I really recommend checking it out. So if you wanna know more, or if you wanna have a call with one of my team to see if the VA is right for you, have a look down below. I'll drop a link to the VA Academy. It's a service which we run, which is just gonna support you in understanding or growing your business using virtual assistants. Okay, so the third and final thing is about top tips managing your team. Now, I talked about it a moment ago. I, I have a big team. You know, in my Amazon business, I have six. In my Fast Track FBA business, we have like 25 now, I think. What can I share with you that's going to support you in you know, managing your team if you have VAs that's going to help you out? So I just want to share some top tips because I've seen it time and time again, uh, what has made a really big difference. And I think it's really important to share this. And if you want to know, I share this information as well with the VA Academy clients. We have a private Facebook chat group that I share all this on a weekly live call and I answer their questions. What are the top tips that I can recommend for managing VAs, managing your team? Let's go through them now. Okay, so first things first, communicate, communicate, communicate. And when you think you've communicated enough, you probably haven't, communicate some more. I cannot stress it enough. Quite simply, this is text, visual images, uh, video recordings, uh, live calls with your team. If you want to know, my entire job pretty much is 90% of video calls. That's all I'm doing. I'm having live conversations with my team. Why? Because it facilitates communication and it just allows my team to understand exactly what I want and then they can go away and get that done. I can set the expectations really clearly. So communication is super, super key. I promise you, you cannot communicate enough. 
do more of it, it makes such a big difference. Now, the second one I'll probably talk about is just take advantage of technology. Now, two things we use in our business is Slack. We have massive group chats, i.e. for everyone who needs to know, we share the information freely in group chats. Again, communication. And then number two, we use Skype. We use Skype for our video calls. Why? Well, number one, it's free. And then number two is it allows you to record the video to the cloud. The advantage of that is that your team can watch the video back if they've got any questions, or maybe like me, you talk really fast. Then what they can do is download that video and watch it back and obviously answer those questions that maybe they had on the call, just saving you having to repeat yourself. Pretty much all the time, I have Skype calls and I'll get the team to record them on the call and it makes such a difference. Now, the third one, which I'll say is quite simply managing expectations and probably say setting targets. With me, my mantra behind my business and the way I approach it is very simple. Number one, clearly define what you want. Clearly define your expectations, i.e. set the targets. Is it five deals a day, 10 deals a day? I want to spend 400 pound this week on stock. I want to make this much. Clearly define that goal and clearly define how you're going to measure it and then make sure that your team really understand that. And that is what you're talking about all the time. And then my suggestion is clearly define what you want, i.e. 10 deals a day. And then the question for you is, hey, how can I help my team? That is it. The team know exactly what they need to do. And now your job becomes not one of telling them how to do it, but supporting them in getting that result. So clearly define expectations. And now your job becomes supporting them, not telling them how to do it. Now, in addition to that, I would also recommend just explaining why it's important or how or why you want them to achieve that goal, how it affects the bigger, wider business. If they understand the reason why, it does make a difference and it helps them in understanding why they need to do what they're doing. The next one I'll talk about is recognize activity or recognize people getting doing the right behaviors. Now, it might not be that they are getting the exact result yet, but you can see if they continue the behavior that they are doing, that is going to lead to the result you want. And it's about encouraging, supporting your team, growing on the journey that they're on to make the most out of what's happening, you know, to keep progressing on that journey. So quite simply, how do we do that in my business? We have a Slack channel, which is just an internal Slack across both businesses. And we're constantly sharing positive success stories about results that we're getting, but also as well, maybe on an individual level, I'm saying, hey, you didn't get this, but I just want to say, I really like you've done X, Y, this, this, and this. These are the kind of behaviors which will get you the result. So do not worry about not getting the result yet. You are doing the right behaviors, the right actions, which will get you the result. So stick at it, well done. So again, recognizing good behaviors, recognizing good actions will really help build a great culture within your business. Now, the final two, which I'll probably talk about is focus on results or focus on outcomes, not so much the activity. Quite simply, I said it before, clearly define the result that you want. I.e., I want 10 deals a day. Now, so many people go down the route of, I want 10 deals a day and I want you to do it from these stores and I want you to do it from that. You're like, man, that doesn't matter. Like, it really doesn't matter. Clearly define the 10 deals a day and then let the VA figure it out. So quite simply, is recognize the results that they're getting. Don't focus too much on the activities of doing it. Focus on the results. That's what you should be looking at because that's, at the end of the day, what we want. Now, in regards to getting the results, be flexible. Give your team the flexibility to go out there and figure out their way of doing it. It's just going to make it better for them. It's going to make it a more enjoyable experience. And they have a certain element of control over what they do day to day. And hey, I don't really care what my team do day to day, as long as they're getting the results that I want, that my business needs to grow. So I'm not going to sit here and micromanage them. I'm just going to let them get on with it, as long as they deliver the results that I want. Now that leads me to the final thing which I'll say is, and I will stress this time and time again, make your workplace a fun, fun place to be. Have a laugh, enjoy yourself, get on with your team, make it enjoyable. We all know that we work for our bosses, we don't work for a company. If your immediate line manager is bad, you're probably going to quit. But if your immediate line manager is fun, but the company itself is pretty bad, you'll probably stay. So be that person who makes a great working environment, have a laugh with your team, enjoy it, recognize success, just make it a fun place. My God, I don't want to come to work and be miserable and moany and complaining all the time. I want to have fun. Make it a fun place to work. Build a great culture in your business because you know what? You and me, we build great companies that many people want to work for. So have fun, enjoy it. This is your life.
make it a business which is fun. Okay, so that is pretty much it from me today. What I will say is if you've liked that hit, give me a like, give me a thumbs up. Obviously, it just lets me know that you like this kind of content and obviously I can do more of it. And if you want to see more content, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Obviously, that is going to let you know when I release more videos. It's going to help you grow your Amazon business. So what I will say is I'm going to drop a link around here to a video on how to hire and train an admin VA. Why? Because building your team, building your systems out, supporting your team is going to be super important and that video is just going to help you out so watch that but what i will say for me thomas parkinson and fast track fba thank you very much